Well, good afternoon. This is Dave Jones with Storm Center Communications and Geo Collaborate. It is noon on uh, September 23rd. It's a Monday, and uh, we have been talking all weekend and over uh, the last part of last week about a potential tropical system that may be developing or forecast to develop in the Western Caribbean. Well, indications are that it is now developing. We have a broad area of low pressure, and you can see on this satellite imagery in the western part of the Gulf. I'll point it out here. Uh, this is uh, where we see some pretty rapid uh, thunderstorm activity uh, developing around this broad area of low pressure. Uh, the U.S. Air Force is sending its Hurricane Hunter aircraft out there today because the National Hurricane Center has requested observations and then tomorrow, both the U.S. Air Force and the NOAA Hurricane Hunters will be flying into this system uh, to take many measurements uh, to make sure that they understand if this system is starting to stack, meaning uh, the center of the storm, which is very broad right now. There's no indication of a center right now. Uh, it's very broad. Uh, but tomorrow, if that circulation stacks vertically, uh, that sets the stage for the system to develop pretty rapidly. And the National Hurricane Center is forecasting rapid intensification of this system. So by this time tomorrow, we could have Helene, uh, Tropical Storm Helene, uh, or Hurricane Helene, depending on how fast uh, it really does uh, come together. Now, I want to show you GeoCollaborate because uh, we have been watching a long-term forecast from the National Hurricane Center uh, in this red area. This is the red area uh, here in GeoCollaborate that shows where uh, the National Hurricane Center expects this storm to develop over the next several days. Well, now it has been updated, and at 11 o'clock this morning, the National Hurricane Center has updated uh, their forecast. And so now I'm going to turn uh, this outlook off, and I want to turn on uh, the outlook and the forecast because advisories are now being initiated, and so now we do have a wind probability and a track. So uh, the, the track is sort of up the middle. I'm not going to display the cone uh, because the cone is something that many, many people are using to make plans on, and uh, there are impacts well beyond the cone. So what I want to do here is point out uh, the importance of the tropical storm probability forecast. So this is the, uh, the, the track, but the probability of tropical storm force winds extends all the way from the Florida Panhandle uh, down to uh, Fort Myers and a little bit further south. So the real, um, uh, the real impact areas for this storm uh, could be anywhere from the Florida Panhandle to south of Tampa and St. Petersburg, including Sarasota, uh, including Bradenton, and even down towards Fort Myers. Uh, we have to keep our uh, guards up with this because uh, the forecast intensity uh, for this system looks like it could be a rapid intensifier. As a matter of fact, the National Hurricane Center has, uh, by the time of 72 hours reaches, uh, which is um, eight o'clock on Thursday morning, the National Hurricane Center has winds of 110 miles per hour uh, west of Tampa. And it's a, it's a decent uh, distance west of Tampa, uh, but that's going to push a lot of water. We have a lot of time now uh, between the initiation of the advisory uh, towards when this system develops, uh, becomes named, and moves up into the eastern Gulf of Mexico to provide more details. But I just want to emphasize uh, that the models um, across the board, pretty much, have been very consistent in developing something. Uh, now we're seeing that something develop into a uh, potential tropical cyclone number nine. And now the models are forecasting rapid intensification of this system. So we are going to keep you posted. Uh, we'll do another uh, video update perhaps later today or tomorrow morning uh, to keep you updated. Uh, but our recommendation is that uh, plans should be looked at now uh, for impacts along the Florida Gulf Coast. Uh, so the food, fuel, transportation, medical supply, logistics operators 
uh, should start to look at potential impacts of a major hurricane. This could be a major hurricane. That means a category three, four, or five hurricane is possible uh, with this type of rapid intensification. Uh, we're not forecasting a three, four, or five. We're just saying the conditions exist uh, for rapid intensification to happen and for this storm to impact areas uh, from uh, Fort Myers north to Tampa and St. Pete, and then across the Big Bend area. Once again, this would be the third impact this year uh, in the Big Bend area of a hurricane. Uh, and then the models are forecasting this hurricane uh, to remain fairly strong, uh, fairly strong into southern and central Georgia. So we have to keep um, thinking about potential impacts inland for strong winds and a lot of rain. So again, Advisories are just being initiated by the National Hurricane Center. We will continue to monitor this for the SICE, for all the stakeholders, the private sector liaisons at the emergency operations centers, uh, all so we can share more data and information uh, so we can provide that to help planning and positioning crews uh, for response. So I'm sure that uh, discussions are starting for potential mutual assistance. Uh, we are in the early stages of this system, uh, but it looks like a Thursday, Friday impact um, could happen as this storm develops. We will keep you posted. I'm Dave Jones with Storm Center Communications and Geo Collaborate. Uh, this has been an update on September 23rd, Monday, for the SICE and the All Hazards Consortium. And we'll keep you posted with another video update, likely later on uh, this afternoon or early this evening. Thanks so much for watching.